Hey, Hal, how are you? Good, Jack. Uh, back in June, you were on the Michael K. show, and I'm paraphrasing what you said, but it was something along the lines of, if the season doesn't get better and or make the playoffs, I'm going to ask some tough questions. I was wondering if you could specify what were those tough questions that you asked and who did you ask them to? Well, I've asked a lot of questions. I wouldn't even know where to begin. But obviously, the first questions that I asked had to do with, you know, should Aaron Bean Boone be our manager next year? Um, you know, I believe based on a lot of things that he's a good manager, but I didn't want to take my opinion this time around. I wanted to talk to a number of people, which I did. I talked to players, talked to uh, some ex-players like uh, Pettit Swisher, who spent a lot of time in the clubhouse this year, uh, talked to Sabian, Omar, uh, and others. And without, without giving them my opinion on the call, um, you know, they all came to the same conclusion, which is Aaron is a good manager and he should be our manager in 2024. So that was certainly the first big question, the first big decision I needed to make. What other questions have I asked? I, many, 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 starting with what goes on in New York, what goes on with the Major League Club, obviously all the way down to where I'm at right now at the Himes Complex and what we're doing in the in the minor league levels. I, I know the season is evolving and the offseason has just begun, but with the questions that you have asked, what kind of roadmap do you think you've laid out to make sure that 2023, in the words of Brian Cashman, doesn't carry over a disaster into 2024. Yeah, look, I, I we had, as you know, three days, pretty hardcore meetings here in Tampa. Um, I did not want to be a part of those meetings because I felt my presence could influence people from really voicing everything they wanted to voice. And I, I talked to people before and they agreed with me. But I did speak to him at the beginning and I, I just told him that, you know, this season is completely unacceptable, um, that you know, we got a winning record. That's not an accomplishment. That's a requirement as far as I'm concerned. And that everybody needs to check their egos at the door. And in a respectful way, everybody needs to be challenging each other and critical each, of, of each other and, and what goes on in the, uh, the individual's various worlds. Um, and that if anybody thought that everything in your world is just perfect and you're doing everything right, then you should just leave because you'll be useless to the, to the proceedings. So... You know, I, I wanted to I wanted to lay out and make clear that we need to look at everything we're doing and there doesn't need to be any finger pointing behind anybody's back because you're all in the room doing it to each other's faces. And, uh, you know, I'm told the meetings, I've read the notes to the meetings, it's about 40 pages of them, but uh, they were respectful, but they were heated at times and very honest, very frank. And, uh, you know, as the days and weeks ensue here, I think I think a lot of things are going to come of it. Um, changes perhaps in personnel, certainly in certain practices. Um, but those discussions are ongoing between the parties that were in the room every day here. And, uh, you know, we're working really hard. I mean, Cash was just down here for two weeks in Tampa. So we had a lot of meetings and a lot of discussions, uh, and that's going to continue. I, I don't want to get specific about our inner workings of the company here, Dave, but, um, you know, clearly bringing in this outside company to look at our analytics um, and I know it's been referred to as an audit. It's really not that. It's a collaboration, a year-long collaboration where, and Cash can explain this better than me, you know, we're going to look at their uh, systems and their processes that they use to analyze data and make decisions. Um, these are processes that come from their years in the industry of experience before they started this company, and also from their experience with, with other major league clubs that they've, that they've worked with. We're then going to take all that what we've learned and, and compare it to what we do and the way that we analyze the data and, and make decisions and the processes we have. And, you know, there could very well be some areas where we feel, you know, we need to, to do better and, and change. So, I mean, you know, clearly, clearly that's going to be a big deal. We're obviously getting a new hitting coach. Um, that's going to be a significant deal. We, we did not get where we needed to be with run production last year. Um, probably our biggest problem, I would say. So there's going to be some big changes, but there's, again, we're looking at so much that there's going to be changes some people might not consider significant, but Judge and I, Judge and I may, um, because, you know, we're, we're doing this every day. Um, so there's just, there's just so, so many stones we unturned during those three days of meetings. I mean, it literally was eight hours straight for three days, eight or nine hours. Um, so, but, you know, as far as the big change, those are obviously two big ones. I mean, I would like to point out this process of self-evaluation didn't begin 
three weeks ago in Tampa. It really began before the season begun by going out and hiring Omar and Brian Sabian, two guys with a ton of baseball knowledge. They've had a whole season now. They spent time in New York. They spent time here in Tampa. Sabian just moved back to Tampa. They were a big part of these meetings, and I've talked to them about several things since those meetings, and that kind of process will continue as well. So this really this really stemmed from the disappointment of last postseason, and um, those, two, those two guys are going to be an integral part of everything we do. I mean, do you think, just to follow it up, Hal, do you think part of that change is a shift in how you do use analytics and that data? Are you bringing in a little bit more of a scouting impact with, with Omar and, and Sabian having a bigger seat at the table going forward? I don't know if it's going to lead to any changes or not in analytics. That we, We're not going to know that until we really, really get into these guys' brains, right, uh, the consultant, and, and really try to understand what good decisions they've made and, you know, how they got to those decisions. And, you know, that may very well be the case, but I can't sit here right now. Again, this was a year. They're going to be with us a whole year um, going back and forth. So it, it's it's – it's hard for me to say, but I look analytics has taken a lot of heat, um, not justified in my opinion. But, you know, I think one of the misconceptions that's out there, because I hear it from a lot of people, is that, you know, Boone makes every decision in the dugout during a game based <clears throat> on analytics. That's just not true. I mean, analytics gives Boone and the coaches a lot of information. So do the pro scouts. It's up to Boone during the game. You know, when he puts the lineup together and then everything after, what he wants to do with all that information. I mean, honestly, if you ask the the analyst, they'll probably say that too many times Boone makes a decision during the game that's based on his experience, what he's seeing, his intuition. Um, you know, whether that's accurate or not, uh, I can assure you we don't have an analyst, you know, standing behind Boone in the dugout, you know, telling him you need to pinch it here. You need to get this pitcher out of here. You need to steal a base. I know of at least one other team that does have an analyst slash coach in the dugout, and I'm sure that manager is hearing about numbers the whole game. Uh, but it's not the case here. So I just think people need to understand that. Well, that is a change, bringing Zealous on, Joel. That's an absolute change. And, you know, the hitting coach is a change as well. And, you know, he decided I never got into the discussions about what we would do or not do. They just it didn't happen. He decided he wanted to be with his family more. But the, those are those are big changes, you know, whether Zealous has begun or not. Um, you know, if you're asking about personnel changes, there, there might be some, but there might be none. And as far as the other changes, Joel, again, changes that we make that Aaron Judge and I may may think, you know, this is a pretty significant change. You guys may not. Um, uh, you know, I just don't know. But changes will be made. You know, it's, it's whether or not you guys consider them significant or not. I, I can't control. Um, but as much stuff as we're looking at and as many topics as we're talking about, I have no doubt there's going to be some changes. Well, let's let let's let's look at a few. I'll get to that. I'll answer that question. I promise. But let let's look at a few good things that we've done. Peralta trade was good. I mean, bringing in Holmes and Hamilton was a purely an analytical play. Um, Jose Trevino trade was good. So I mean, we've done some good things as well. Tyone a couple of years ago, but but nonetheless, let let's just pick one guy you're talking about. Let's because everyone's talking about Joey Gallo, right? So I can tell you that this wasn't just an analytics play. Everybody in the room was a yes on Joey Gallo. There might've been some discussion about, are we giving away too much, you know, in the trade, but everybody wanted Joey Gallo. Um, there's always going to be a risk reward. We talk to as many people as we possibly can about, can this player play in New York? You know, we talk to people that know him. We talk to whatever coaches we know. I mean, we do the homework we can do, but there's always going to be a risk reward. Um, but just know in that case, it didn't work out. You're right. But, it was it was a you know it was a unanimous decision to do that and in the end my decision. Now it rode on I think way too way too soon. He had an injury. I mean I don't think we can throw him in there. Montas clearly he got he got injured and you know that 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 didn't work out. We knew there was a chance of that, but we're trying to win a World Series that year, so we we made the move and we got. Him. But there have been some good trades too, and I, I think they get I think they get overlooked somewhat. But I understand your point. Why I think he's a good manager. Yeah, he's he's extremely intelligent. He's hardworking. Um, you know, if the players respect him as a manager, they want to play for him and win for him. I mean, these are to me very important things. Um, and he's he, he's a balanced guy, which I kind of alluded to before, in that he's able to take all the information we throw his way from both sides, and he's able to uh, you know he's able to to log it all in and you know work with his coaches. He's great with his coaching staff. So. You know, one of the most important things to me, the most important thing, yes, is winning championships. I, so that I understand where you're going with that. But 
if a manager doesn't have the respect of his players and the players don't want to play and win for him, uh, that would always be a problem with me. But in talking to current players, as I told you I did, um, that's absolutely not the case. And, and that's that's a big deal to me in the clubhouse. Now, look, I think Cash summed it up. I mean, it was awful. I mean, we we accomplished nothing. We, we didn't win a division, didn't make it to the playoffs, didn't win a series in the playoffs, much less a championship. Uh, you know, I, I went over the winning record. That's a requirement as far as I'm concerned. So the fans uh, didn't get anywhere close to what they deserve. But, you know, we're all very passionate about this. We're, we're working our ass off. And, um, you know, we're going to do everything we can to right the ship for 2024. But uh, bad year.